Hello everybody, Christian from Treasure Town here, and today we're going to be speaking about the 1886 Morgan Silver Dollar. We're going to be going over its history, the values, um, and we'll also talk both about the general Morgan Dollar history as well as this specific date because there's always some info for each date and mint mark combo. There's also a lot of varieties called VAMs um, that you want to know what the VAMs to look for are. It's really little characteristics that are going to make your coins always more valuable. Then we'll also discuss mint errors and some of the proofs or the proof-like and deep mirror proof-like strikes. But anyways, here's a overview of the information. We got the key dates down here. Obviously, anything from Carson City is pretty good. But uh, overall, the 1886 Morgan dollar was, and just Morgan dollars in general, were way more successful than the trade dollars. Uh, 1873 saw silver sort of demonetized as being a, you know, where you could bring silver to a mint and get it turned into coins. Um, the Bland Allison Act, which was passed in 1876, uh, allows that free silver again, leading to the start of this series in 1878. Um, that goes until 1904, though the Panic of 1893 um, leads to a repealing of the Sherman Silver Purchase Act that had them producing even more of them. Um, so basically what happens is a lot of those later dates become key dates or just tougher to get. Um, and then the Morgan dollar gets brought back in 1921 for a little bit before switching to peace to commemorate the end of World War I. Uh, now in terms of this specific dollar, it is one of the highest mintages uh, of Morgan dollars out there um, and was the highest mintage at the time that it was produced. Um, they were just pumping these out, um, and it's almost always that in 1887 has, has sort of been tied for the most common coins up to Mint State 65. And there were so many of these made that they would sit in vaults until even the 1950s, early 1960s, and people in the 50s were still, you know, they hardly wanted to get a bag of a thousand of these uh, because you know, it, it was just worth a dollar each, uh, no premium above its spending value. And while there are some with really nice luster, often it's more satiny instead of frosty. Frosty generally is slightly more appealing. Um, there are a fair amount of them that are weakly struck or have irregular metal flow, but there were so many made that that's not really a factor to consider too much. You know, there's just a lot of variance within the many, many millions, almost 20 million that were made. Now here we see the values, um, and it's super attainable to get a Mint State 66 coin, only 400 bucks. Um, compare that to a lot of other dates that would be extremely high. Um, you can get Mint State 63 in the low $100, same thing with 64, a nice jump to 65, another jump to 66. Um, and then even Mint State 67, 1400 bucks, relatively low compared to a lot of the other date and mint mark combos out there. So that sort of brings us to the end of the specifics. Let's get into the VAMs. Now onto the VAMs part. So you're going to want to look for some different VAMs on the coins. Now the first is going to be this line in the six right here, sort of above the main zero part of the six. There's going to be this little line. Um, and you're going to see the values don't increase massively, but it's a nice little jump, you know, maybe 25 bucks to 50 bucks. And it'll certainly help your coin sell faster just because it does have a little bit of something different going on. There's a few other ones to look for. I'm only doing ones on the main list. So top 100, hot 50, hit list 40. Wow. Um, right here, we've got a clash reverse. So clash dies. The dies came together in the striking process and left an imprint. Um, so we see that in markers right here and here. Um, along the to the right of the eagle's right wing um, and this one again not anything major in terms of value increases about 35 bucks 40 bucks more per coin um, there's also going to be a doubled arrows variety on the back of the coin again you can see that doubling some shelving in the bottom of the you know feathers in the arrows as well as continuing up into this middle arrow a little bit um, no crazy values again um, and then there's also going to be this double date. You can see again, sort of the lip in the six, um, sort of at that bottom part. This one is a very expensive VAM. So if you've noticed, a lot of the other ones haven't been quite as much of a value jump, but this one trades for about 400 bucks in AU55, 800 in Mint State 63, and then 4,000 in Mint State 65. So, you know, this one certainly qualifies to be on the hot 50 list. Um, a lot of interest in it. And then lastly, there's going to be a line in the M on a few of them. This one also trades a little bit better in Mint State 65, but that M in Morgan's neck 
uh, or not in Morgan, but in Liberty's neck, uh, Charles T. Morgan is the designer. Um, that's going to, you know, add maybe not quite as much down low, but a, a nice hundred buck premium from Mint State 65 example. Definitely check already graded coins. You can definitely find some VAMs there. Now I want to talk a few times about some of the Mint errors. This is just purely out of interest, but this coin ended up being struck six times. The and the, the holder also mentions it's a close overlap between the striking, but some of the devices sort of look um, a little bit sort of worn out. You can see here in the denticles, it's also um, kind of messed up um, just all around the denticles on both sides. And this sold for about $4,000. Um, you know, it was, it was when they say close overlap, you know, it's not like it's super dramatically punched so this maybe was able to pass the inspection or pass whatever mechanisms were in place but the coin probably just got stuck in the dies and, and received those strikes um, there's also this partial collar strike and you can see sort of right up here in the top part of the coin it has a nice eye appeal too but you can see how the collar it's not like doubled but there's sort of two different layers there um, and that's because it partially was out of the collar um, was not fully retained and this sold for 300 bucks or so in 2019 mint state 63 and then lastly this one was not from 1886 i tried to get the ones from that year but this one was just struck way off center it wasn't right between the dies and morgan dollar errors seem to be very very expensive so this one sold for forty one thousand um, dollars and i always just like to highlight it because if you've got something like this on a 1886 or any morgan dollar you're in luck. Um, that's just all I'll say there. The proofs, uh, low mintages, they were almost always, except for you know the branch mint proofs, which is sort of a legend, super expensive coins. Most of them were made in Philadelphia. Here they did 886 to sort of match up with the uh, 1886. So a fun fact, some of them, you know, this toned really nicely. This is right at the upper level, but they're all going to be pretty expensive no matter what condition you get the proofs in you can sort of see nice frosty fields though the frost isn't really what makes it just extra crisp um, devices and you know specially prepared if you've got one in hand you can definitely tell that it's a proof um, then there's also going to be things proof like or deep mirror proof like um, these are business strike coins but there would have been some frost in the first strikes that each of the dies produce um, so the proof like, you know, instead of being a, I don't know, hundred dollar coin, maybe mint say 63 bumps to 140. But if that's a deep mirror proof like that'll go to 250. So same thing on the mint say 65, maybe starts at 250, but a proof like coin 350, um, mint say 65 for deep mirror proof like going to be about $850. So also just something that's fun to collect. I always like deep mirror proof like Morgans. They just look absolutely stunning in hand definitely more so than the proof like and obviously that's why the deep mirror designation is given but anyways that pretty much brings us to the end i hope this was helpful whether it's different things to treasure hunt for or just the general values overview or the history which i somewhat stumbled through hope that you enjoyed this video and i'll look forward to seeing you on some similar ones in the future Thanks for watching the video. I'd encourage you to like the video, comment, and make sure to subscribe to my channel. And I also have Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and some other social media platforms. You can also go to my main channel website, treasuretownyt.com, to learn more about the channel and sort of stay in contact. I also will eventually host all of these videos on coinsmetalscards.com, which will be both news, marketplace, and coin information. I do have the goal of eventually getting pretty much every U.S coin, date, mint mark, denomination on the channel with a similar video to the one that you just watched, and that will likely all be hosted there. Uh, and then I also have treasuretowncoins.com, which is sort of my coin dealing wing, coin dealing only entity that is a little bit less focused on content production. So thank you so much, and I'll look forward to seeing you on some of my other videos. I also have videos that are not just the date uh, mint mark denomination recap in this format, uh, so you can check some of those out, and I'll yeah have fun seeing you there.